Hello, I'm Dr. Walters, and I would like to welcome you to this brief vodcast, Sociological Theorizing, Globalizing Gender Issues. The vodcast is part of our broader thematic effort of or to integrate race, class, and gender issues and questions, problematics, into the mainstream of sociological theorizing. This podcast is based on the presidential address to the Eastern Sociological Society by Christine Bose, Globalizing Gender Issues, Many Voices, and Different Choices. Professor Bose raises the question of intersectionality. More specifically, why do gender inequalities differ in different parts of the world Why is gender inequality greater in some parts than others? She identifies, along the lines of Patricia Collins earlier, four major intersecting axes, transnational, regional, cross-cutting thematic, and unique national conditions. Under transnational, economic conditions loom large. Bose notes that we live in a globalized political economy characterized by neoliberalism or low levels of any form of regulation on markets, international markets, local markets. These or this reduction in the kinds of legal political monitoring and controls that have existed in the past has resulted in a number of structural adjustment programs. These structural adjustments have resulted from the huge debt accrued by lower income countries and the necessity to shrink or cut back the formal sector of occupations in the public sector, a sector in which women have often found high levels of professional employment. A second factor results from the rising rate of migration, again something that has been characteristic of this new neoliberal global political economy in which there are high levels of competition for very low-cost labor supplies, pushing the price of labor way down and pushing then women and especially minorities into lower level occupations, both internally and even higher level economically developed countries, but also then in lesser developed countries. In lesser developed countries, especially the reduction of the power autonomy and economic wherewithal of women has resulted in a high level of trafficking, sometimes in quotes voluntary, and other times highly involuntary. This has also resulted, or another condition is also the violence against women when these divides in their power across genders is magnified. On a regional level, these reflect perhaps shared geographic-based political and economic conditions, and these themselves may be shaped by a transnational forces such as the ones that we just discussed. Sometimes these are positive and sometimes these are negative, and nation building and the formation of regional bodies, such as the African Union, have often uh, empowered women or given them a, a, a better, a greater or deeper political voice. But the process of assessing gender inequality and intersectionality in those contexts means assessing the gender impact constantly in feminist research on policies and then always challenging through that research patriarchal uh, domination. Education, property ownership, and good jobs are fundamental to equity and parity issues for women. 
the primary indicators are education in developed countries or developing nations or develop, developed nations and literacy in developing nations. At the national level, as we all know from our own domestic settings, localized political, economic, and cultural dynamics intersect with broader international and regional patterns. These can be cultural, religious, political, all kinds of dimensions that are part of the broader setting or contextual setting of a nation. Nations differ dramatically in terms of the political dynamics of the family and the perception of the role of the family, uh, especially as we look cross-nationally or cross-culturally at different countries and different kinds of family law systems. Individual nations also differ dramatically in terms of their access to feminist research, and that feminist research becomes a very important tool for providing information for women in all settings. Cross-cutting things include health concerns, and health concerns are dominant in many settings and many inst instances. So HIV and AIDS looms large. Reproductive health and health care, of course, dramatically uh, affect women in all cultures, in all, all countries, uh, globally and locally. Likewise, the imbalance in the sex ratio that results from cultural degradation of women and missing women, so there are many instances in which female infants or female fetuses are more likely to be destroyed than males. These are really big issues and important issues for women. There are also issues of religion and the state. Uh, and these are issues, all of these issues are issues that make for excellent kinds of comparative studies. But fundamentalist Protestantism, Muslim and conservative Catholic cultures tend to have a deep influence on local family law, but especially Islam and family law, where the Islamic law, Islamic family law especially becomes intertwined with national constitutional law. And then, of course, war and militarism have a deep impact on women and children. Bosey draws some very interesting conclusions in noting the circular relationships between feminist activism and gender-focused research, raising the question of which shapes, which does activism push gender-focused research, or does gender-focused research push activism and then change in the direction of parity for women. A key factor is whether or not the research is disseminated through organizations such as the United Nations. So uh, these are very important and interesting topics and I'm eager to see how you throughout the semester embed these in the more mainstream theoretic or theorist that we will be studying and moreover how you address these in terms of the theorizing piece of the sociological theory course.